Hello and welcome to RCGC Today. I'm your host, Diane Carbonetta. To start off today's show, we have with us Director of Student and Veterans Affairs, John Ryder, and Nicholas Smith, Navy veteran and president of the Student Veterans Organization. They're here to tell us about some of the programs and services available to veterans at Rowan College at Gloucester County. Thank you both so much for joining us today. No problem. Thank you. Rowan College at Gloucester County has a strong commitment to supporting those who have served our country. John, can you tell us a little bit about some of the services the college offers to veterans? Absolutely. Um, we offer uh, a number of services and new initiatives that we've instituted uh, over the past couple years. Um, some of them are, we have uh, our vet to vet tutoring, we have, um, which is a peer uh, system. We have our veterans bookshelf, which is for our students if they need books, can't afford them. Um, we have a veterans lounge on campus that you know provides um, a variety of computer capabilities, a uh, place where they can just kind of relax. Um, we also offer green zone training as part of that initiative, um, you know, to make our campus more military friendly. One of the things we've done is uh, we've instituted green zone training for our employees to understand the veteran a little bit better, um, and this has had a great um, effect on many employees who didn't understand what veterans were all about. Um, one of the other things that we do also is uh, with our SVA club, we also you know have available you know membership to all our veteran students, not just you know ones using GI benefits. So we invite them and you know spouses, dependents um, to participate. So these are some of the things that we do. Um, there's more I'm sure I'm missing, but um, but we we are constantly changing and constantly striving to change things to make it a more military friendly campus. RCGC recently hosted its annual Operation Stand Down. Yes. What can you tell us about this event? Operation Stand Down uh, was designed basically for the veteran student. Um, this is a program where the school brings the veteran services to the campus mm -hmm. and the student is able to walk around, interact with all these various services. Um, I was lucky this year, I brought in 32 uh, different services to campus, um, which they basically volunteered their time, come over and participate to help our veteran students. Uh, several of our students benefited from this uh, greatly. Um, like I said, there was a lot of new services that participated this year, but um, I'm looking to make it even bigger next year. Uh, right now, we only invited staff and uh, students that were veterans, but next year, we're looking to open it up to the entire county. Nicholas, you hosted a table at Operation Stand Down, but you also took a little time to walk around. What were some of the resources represented there that you, as a veteran, thought were particularly valuable? I think that the, the biggest thing for Operation Stand Down is getting the information out to the student veterans on campus that don't know that this stuff is readily available to them. So a lot of these guys get out of the service and they just think they go to school and that's it. They don't understand it. If they're having trouble at home, whether it be uh, mental help they would need or physical help or contacting the VA or just being able to find resources or just people to hang with or talk to about their problems. Um, being that they were all there at the Operation Stand Down, it really helped these guys understand what was available to them and how to go about making that next step to getting better in whatever they're not that good in. Can you tell us a little bit about the Student Veterans Organization and maybe some of the events you've helped to organize through them? So. As president, I oversee a lot of the things, um, but I have to give it up to the other officers and some of the student veterans that aren't even in the office holding a position. Um, it's a collective effort, and uh, I would say the number one thing that we like is the PT. So we have veteran PT. We do it uh, Monday through Thursday at the school's gym from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. and it's not as structured as you would think. It's nothing like actual military PT, but we do implement a lot of military stuff into it. So we're trying to get it so where we can welcome non-student veterans, just regular traditional students, 
and work out with us so we can all share our stories together and we can get them doing some stuff that we did when we were in the service that we liked and they could do they could show us some stuff that we haven't done in a while or have never done before so we really like to build the camaraderie between the the student veterans and the non student veterans on campus John, how can veterans find out more about the unique opportunities available to them at Rowan College at Gloucester County? They could, they could contact our office on campus or they can um, reach out through our webpage. Um, they could schedule an appointment with our certifying officer. Um, as Nick said, we're a friendly group. We're looking to expand our footprint on campus and you know, have more people uh, join our ranks. Well, it sounds like Rowan College at Gloucester County has a lot to offer our veterans. Thank you both so much for stopping by to tell us about it. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll be back in a moment with more RCGC Today. Rowan Choice is a one or two year program. We have students that live on campus at Rowan University but take our classes here at RCGC. It's less expensive than Rowan University and you're still learning everything like anyone else. I still feel like a Rowan University student. I think it's a good choice to be able to want to go to a community college and get that education but also want to have that dorm life because at the end of the day one of the biggest things about going to college is being away from home and living on your own. My Rowan Choice experience is very great and it's changing me for the better. Welcome back to RCGC Today. This past April, Rowan College at Gloucester County hosted its third annual Suda Student Career Readiness Fashion Show. I hope you enjoy these highlights from the scholarship competition that's leaving students well suited for professional success. first impressions are lasting impressions and the first thing you see when you meet somebody is their physical appearance. If you're going in an important job interview, uh, you definitely want to look the part, you want to look good. So having a appropriate attire and really just feeling good about myself, it takes it to the next level. The history of Brooks Brothers itself is amazing and that would give you more confidence. When I found out that I was accepted, I was elated, literally screaming on the phone. Once everything came together and I had the full suit on, I had this sense of confidence where I truly felt like I could take over the world. And when I put that suit on, I almost cried. It's life-changing, it really is. This summer, Rowan College at Gloucester County and Cumberland County College will become Rowan College, South Jersey. Two campuses, one college, same affordable tuition. Discover a better way to pursue your education at Rowan College at Gloucester County. RCGC offers in-demand degrees, flexible schedule choices, and the best tuition value in New Jersey. Visit rcgc.edu to register. Welcome back to RCGC Today. Joining us next is Kristen Wilson, Social Services and Career Administrator at Rowan College at Gloucester County's Center for People in Transition. She's here to tell us about the center's work to promote the importance of consent and to draw attention to resources that exist for survivors of sexual assault. Thank you so much for joining us today, Kristen. Thanks for having me. Sexual assault is an issue that's been gaining a lot of visibility in recent years, but efforts to create awareness have been going on for quite some time. Can you give us some background on this issue? Absolutely, so this April actually marks the official 18th anniversary of Sexual Assault Awareness Month, but for as long as people have been advocating for social change, people have been talking about sexual assault prevention. Women of color were spearheading social change and equality movements during the civil rights era, and activism for sexual assault awareness and prevention was gaining traction in the 70s, leading to the first rape crisis centers opening up in our country. Activism continued during the 80s and 90s, which led to the uh, first official observance of Sexual Assault Awareness Month in 2001. You recently hosted a number of events in recognition of Sexual Assault Awareness Month to provide resources to Rowan College at Gloucester County uh, students. What were some of the resources you chose to highlight? So the ones that we chose to highlight were firstly ones that we have on our campus. So we have bathroom signs that are in or should be in every single stall 
on our campus that highlight reporting processes and how to go about reporting things in a confidential way. So whether that is confidentially coming to our office at People in Transition or the Counseling and Wellness Center uh, upstairs in the College Center, or going through and formally reporting through either the Title IX office, student affairs, or with security. We also highlighted our partnership with the Center for Family Services uh, SERVE program, which they are the off-county provider uh, 24 hours a day. They have a hotline for survivors of domestic and sexual violence. So we chose to highlight those resources for our students to let them know that our campus is safe for them to talk about things that are happening to them. And while it might not be happening on our campus, it is happening to them out in the real world. And we want them to know that it's safe to talk about it with our staff here. Now, even though this is a very daunting issue, you did find a number of unique ways to draw students in and to make the topic feel more accessible. Can you tell us about some of those? Absolutely. So Sexual Assault Awareness Week was the first week in April, and we had a lot of activities. So the first one that we started with on Monday was our Teal Tutu Run that had students, staff, faculty, uh, running an obstacle course around uh, the green space on campus and they had to wear tutus, there were, you know, spinning on a bat, it was uh, jumping, jumping rope, there was, there was a lot of fun things, different teams that got involved, so it was nice to see everybody come together for that. Tuesday was a really jam-packed day. We had we started off with consent trivia, which uh, trivia is something that student life does often. So they chose to do uh, consent trivia, which talked about statistics, it talked about resources, and it talked about what consent is and what it isn't within relationships. So Rachel Hacker was there, or it wasn't Rachel, it was Mike Befford. He was actually doing the trivia questions and I was kind of there to answer any of the questions when some of the answers were wrong, which it's okay that they got the answers wrong. Uh, so with trivia, the next event that we had on Tuesday was our Survivor Art Gallery, which is one of my favorite things that we started on campus. We had submissions from students that ranged from actual pieces of artwork to spoken word poetry and an actual musical performance. And these are survivors that we have on our campus and giving them an outlet to help their healing process is really powerful and it's still going on right now in the art gallery over in the College Center, so that's really exciting. Uh, we also had a group of students that uh, went over to Rowan University for their Take Back the Night event, which was a huge event that they've been doing for some years now, and getting them to see what's happening on, a, on another campus that's a bigger campus. Uh, that was really exciting for them to see different ways that groups are getting together to talk about this. On Wednesday, we had our Gender Roles in the Workplace workshop, which was a really special event that brought Gloucester County Freeholder Heather Simmons on campus, as well as staff from Rutgers University, Tiara Neal. And they both did a really excellent job at highlighting what different gender roles look like in the workplace and how there are different expectations for men and women and people who are gender non-conforming. And Heather is a great speaker as well who always brings her story to life to everyone that she speaks with. So it was really great to have them both on campus that day. And Thursday was another one of my favorite events. We had the CAP Center uh, sponsor a Helping Professions Career Fair. So we had agencies and organizations from the community come onto campus and talk about the internship and career opportunities within the field of uh, healthcare, social service, social work, criminal justice, psychology, sociology, to really see what options are out there. And you know, students know that they want to help people, but they might not know how or what their career is going to look like in that capacity. So I thought that was a really fun and exciting event uh, to really target those students. So as much as we did that week, we're always striving to do more, which is exciting for me. How can students find out more about the resources that exist for them both on and off campus? So absolutely, they can check out those bathroom signs. And there are several organizations that are both state and national. 
uh, NJ CASA has a great website with resources, the NSVRC, National Sexual Violence Resource Center, and Rape on Campus, Know Your Nine, which talks about Title IX rights and you know laws about that for students. And actually coming and talking to any of us in, in person over in the People in Transition, Student Affairs, we're here to talk about it. We're here to help make it safe for you to come to your healing on campus. Well, it sounds like the center is working hard to promote safety and respect on campus. Thank you so much for stopping by to Thanks, share it Diane. with us. We'll be back in a moment with more RCGC Today. My name is Rosita Rivera and my field of study is human resource management. My experience here at RCGC has been wonderful. If there were no online classes, I would not be in college. I am so happy that I even had this possibility of being a full-time employee, a full-time parent, and being able to go to college. It's rewarding and I'm just so proud of myself and I thank RCGC for having this online program for people like myself. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Christina Nace and I'm the Dean of the STEM Division and I have Liliana Lomanowitz with me and Joe Albanese. How are you guys doing today? Great. Great, awesome. Um, so Liliana is the President of the Women in STEM Academy. Do you want to tell us a little more about that? So the Women in STEM Academy is a community of women in science, technology, engineering, and math. Being in STEM is kind of overwhelming and it's common to feel left out or even scared sometimes. So we try to empower women in their field of choice, no matter if it's chemistry or physics or math. Uh, we try to support them in their current classes and in their future careers. There is a scholarship available, but all, any and all women in STEM are, are welcome in the program. We have an induction ceremony every year with the pinning ceremony and our own lab coats. Our, um, we have our own special study lounge in the Math and Engineering Center where we host monthly cafe meetings to socialize with each other and to network with our faculty. We have field trips, guest speakers from other colleges and our industry partners. We have a lot of community service opportunities including working with children of all ages. Awesome. Um, have you, do you do any work with uh, high school students? Local sure. High school students? Um, every year we have our Women in STEM Fair on RCGC's campus. We invite students from all of our local high schools to learn about the different types of science, mostly through some historical women in STEM in their work. For example, we extract our DNA in honor of Rosalind Franklin, we study mar and we study mushrooms like Beatrix Potter did. The students don't just observe, but they also experience what science is really about. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so I know Liliana, you work a lot with Joe. Uh, Joe is the president of the Science Club. Um, do you want to tell us about some of the activities maybe you work on together or the Science Club? Absolutely. So for the, uh, for the Science Club, we're working on getting together some more trips and more fun events. Uh, currently, we're doing a lot of outreach. Um, so we do a lot of school visits and we recently went to the Boys and Girls Club to uh, run science experiments with the children there. We made elephant toothpaste and uh, it was a great time. So um, one of the faculty there told me that when they first told the students that we were that they're going to be working with a bunch of scientists from RCGC, they were like, "Oh, science, boo!" But uh, once we got there and after we did all the experiments, they were super excited about science. They all had a great time, and it's just really great to see children being inspired and enjoying being educated in science. Uh, we're also uh, on Tuesday nights at RCGC, we have STEM Scouts, which we work with the same group of kids uh, week in and week out, and we work on. Uh, pushing them in in science and it's a very organized program that's affiliated with the with the Boy Scouts of America and um, it, it's really it's really an awesome program to help children get involved with science and technology. Awesome. Um, one of the big events that we we did with the STEM Scouts was the STEM Scout Expo. Uh, you guys were both heavily involved in that. Um, so we did a lot of mentoring the students and helping them with their projects. Uh, then we had the big science fair at the end. Did you enjoy that experience? Do you think that was uh, worthwhile for the students to? Absolutely. To I think that it's one thing to be working on projects individually and even in groups, but another pr to present those projects, not only to you know their parents who were very proud of them, but also to their, their siblings and their peers, and then even to the professionals who ended up judging them. Awesome. 
Um, and do you have any events coming up that we, we have looking forward to in the, in the fall, maybe? <laughs> yeah, we have uh, SteamCon coming up. Were there any special events that you liked at that, at that event? Yeah, SteamCon, uh, we had an escape room, which everyone enjoyed. Everyone came back to, because we, we were in with, um, we had a whole, tables full of experiments for the kids, elephant toothpaste, marshmallow catapults, all that fun stuff. And they would come back and they were like, oh, we just did this escape room, and it was so awesome. <laughs> we made our own t-shirts, you know. It, it, it's really, it's a really family, a fun family event that everyone everyone enjoys. Everyone who goes there loves it. Awesome. Well, thank you both for coming here today to talk more about our, some of our STEM initiatives on campus. Um, and we will be back soon. Thanks for having us. Thanks. This summer, Rowan College at Gloucester County and Cumberland County College will become Rowan College, South Jersey. Two campuses, one college, same affordable tuition. Discover a better way to pursue your education at Rowan College at Gloucester County. RCGC offers in-demand degrees, flexible schedule choices, and the best tuition value in New Jersey. Visit rcgc.edu to register. Welcome back to RCGC Today. The Roadrunners Golf Program is in full swing at Rowan College at Gloucester County. Next, we'll hear from some of the athletes eagerly participating in the college's newly resurrected sports program. After a long absence, the Roadrunners are back in the swing of things. The golf program at Rowan College at Gloucester County has been dormant since 1991. But the Roadrunners are back on the course and competing in intercollegiate play after a lengthy absence. We just come out and we have this amazing group of guys and it's, it's awesome. It's really fun being competitive with them. We all like each other. We have a good time. The ball started rolling last year as the Roadrunners took shape as a club team playing mostly for fun. It gave an opportunity for former high school golfers like Williamstown grad Aiden Casper a chance to dust off the clubs and compete at the college level. I was actually very excited uh, playing golf at Williamstown growing up, so uh, it was actually really interesting. And we have a great group of guys here, so. It's been instant chemistry with a team of straight shooters led by team captain and West Deptford grad JJ Pinto. It was decent last year, and then this year we're like, we're, we see the group of guys we have, and we're like, okay, this, like, we can take this somewhere. Not only are the guys having fun, but they're turning heads too. The Roadrunners placed third out of 17 teams in the Region 19 opener on March 25th at Deerwood Country Club. They followed that up by taking the top prize on April 3rd at their home course at Pittman Golf Club. The team bested the field and the tough, windy elements. The conditions were insane. It was tough to hit some greens. You have to be very touchy around the greens. Everyone seemed to play uh, decent for the weather given the circumstances, so hopefully we shoot some low enough to win or close to it. I'm very thrilled. The first match we had at Deerwood last week, we came in third with some outstanding schools. And uh, as you see this one, we uh, came in first this, uh, this week. So I'm very pleased with our team. Head coach Jim Clark, who spent seven years coaching the Gloucester County Institute of Technology's high school team, has stepped in seamlessly to help the RCGC golfers. It's been really good actually. Uh, coach Clark's a great mentor to have out here. And uh, as I said, the group of guys we have all friendly and really nice. and pick one each other up time and time again so uh, he's he's awesome he understands that there's some on and off days for us um, he knows he knows like everybody very well on the team um, he's just a great guy Clark said he's happy to be around an enthusiastic and talented group that is seizing the opportunity to play college golf they came to college and they didn't think they're going to play golf and we didn't think we'd be this successful so far I'm, I'm really pleased Reporting for Rowan College at Gloucester County, this is Mark Zamaro. Rowan Choice is a one or two year program. We have students that live on campus at Rowan University but take our classes here at RCGC. It's less expensive than Rowan University and you're still learning everything like anyone else. I still feel like a Rowan University student. I think it's a good choice to be able to want to go to a community college and get that education but also want to have that dorm life because at the end of the day, one of the biggest things about going to college is being away from home and living on your own. My Rowan Choice experience is very great and it's changing me for the better. Welcome back to RCGC Today. 
every year the Rowan College Foundation hosts an evening of dining, dancing, and entertainment to raise money for student scholarships. The following are some highlights from the 2019 scholarship benefit. Rowan College of Gloucester County held their annual scholarship benefit, honoring Bob Carr of the Give Something Back Foundation and South Jersey Federal Credit Union for their donations, while also recognizing the students who received scholarships. I feel terrific that uh, they thought our program was as powerful and strong as it is, and they're right, it is. It's a great program. Several of the scholarship recipients belong to the MILE initiative at the college, a program cultivating leadership and excellence in minorities. I'm like so proud of them. I'm trying not to cry, but when you see them succeed and you see them have ambition, once you invest in them, I have an open door policy and I, every child matters to me. Every student matters. We support them in their career academic goals. The students receiving scholarships are appreciative of the award and also the skills they acquired on their college journey. I learned to manage my time wisely because my parents aren't living here so I had to learn how to do stuff on my own. When I got here I wanted to separate myself from all the other freshmen and be more proactive in the community and better myself. I deserve it and it's absolutely worth it. It's to celebrate how good we've been doing during school and how good we've been doing in the community to showcase our achievements during school. Being more confident within myself and having strength um, I found that being prevalent within the, few, the, the years that I've been in college. In Williamstown, I'm Isaiah Showell with SNJ Today. This summer, Rowan College at Gloucester County and Cumberland County College will become Rowan College South Jersey. Two campuses, one college, same affordable tuition. Discover a better way to pursue your education at Rowan College at Gloucester County. RCGC offers in-demand degrees, flexible schedule choices, and the best tuition value in New Jersey. Visit rcgc.edu to register. That's all for this episode of RCGC Today. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll leave you with a look at the RCGC Music Society's rendition of Can't Help Falling in Love, performed at the 2019 Scholarship Benefit. Wise men say, only fools rush in, but I can't help falling in love with you. Or I